Hi guys, School here, and this is the Asus Strix GeForce GTX 980 Ti, the fastest GTX 980 that Asus currently makes. In this video, I'm going to unbox, review, and benchmark not one, but two of these monster cards. Firstly, let me start off by saying that Asus kindly sent me these cards to make this benchmark and review video, but all of the benchmarks and opinions you will hear are entirely my own. Let's start off by looking what's inside the box. First thing that struck me was how well packaged it is. It's extremely well protected inside here, and it's also quite neatly packaged with this little black thing containing the accessories, and underneath is the actual graphics card. Let's take a look inside the uh, accessories box. So when we open it up, we have a few items that we'll take out. So we have the power connector. This is uh, to power the actual card itself. We have the CD-ROM, although I'll probably just download the drivers anyway. We have a speed setup manual, which takes us through uh, the various installation things, which to be honest, it's quite straightforward installation anyway. Uh, then we have a little brochure of the Strix range, the various headsets that they do, keyboards, graphics cards, etc. And we have a nice little Strix sticker that you could put on the front of your computer. Over to the graphics card itself. This is inside this static bag here. You take it out and you realize this is a monster of a card. This is pretty heavy and you can see the three massive fans straight away. The actual PCI connector there is protected. We'll just remove the protecting cover and get a look at the card. If we take a look at the outside edge of the card, you can see that it has plenty of output sockets. It has a DVI. It has three display outs and it has a HDMI out, so caters for every single output consideration that you might have. Now you can overclock a normal 980 or 980 Ti, but you're limited by the quality of the components used and how stable they are at higher frequencies and voltages, which can vary from card to card, and the cooling effectiveness that you can provide to the processor. Now the Asus Strix 980 Ti is overclocked out of the box using high quality stable components, the base GPU clock speed is 1216 MHz, but it has a boost of 1317 MHz. It's fitted with 6 GB of DDR5 memory, clocked at 7200 MHz. It has 2816 CUDA cores and supports a maximum resolution of 4096 by 2160 in other words, 4K. Now, high-end graphics cards such as this generate a lot of heat. This is no exception. So how does it stay cool? Firstly, you can see massive heat pipes called DirectCU3. This allows for efficient heat transfer. It has primary and secondary heat pipes designed to move the heat away quickly using water cooling which travels down the pipes. That feeds into a large radiator block which is cooled using three large fans. Now these fans are quite interesting. They have large blades and a wing blade design similar to what you see on a winglet design of an aircraft. This improves, improves the air pressure at the edge and this together means that the card is quieter and cooler, even running down to zero decibels when you're not playing games. The backplate, also called the GPU fortifier, prevents the board from bending and thus keeps the pressure on the cooling block on the processor. Now power is provided via two PCIe uh, power points, which you can see, and each card has a total power draw of 250 watts. There's also SLI connectors on the top edge, and this allows for dual and four-way SLI connection. When fitted, the card looks quite nice. It looks pretty beautiful, actually. It does work best in a red-black red uh, motherboard combo, but will sit nicely in pretty much any kind of motherboard you can fit it into. You can see the pulsating Strix logo light, which illuminates nicely at night. Obviously works better if you have two of them. And the card does come with overclocking and monitoring software known as GPU Tweak 2. Now my guess is that you won't need to overclock this card. And during all of the benchmarking I have done, I have not overclocked the card beyond what is provided out of the box. Nevertheless, using GPU Tweak 2, you can, in fact, overclock the card further. You will have to do your own stability tests if you do this, and do be careful, as you can damage any card when you attempt to overclock it. Now, the GPU Tweak 2 tool allows for VRAM use, shows VRAM usage, GPU speed, temperature, 
and it allows you to set the voltages and frequencies of the memory and the processor core and set the fan thresholds. Fan thresholds are quite important and you can set your own custom threshold using the software. In order to find out how well the cards performed, I ran four benchmarking tests. The first was 3D Mark's Firestrike benchmark test, followed by Tomb Raider game built-in benchmark, Metro Last Light Redux's benchmarking tool, and finally Witcher 3's cutscene, a cutscene often used for benchmarking. I performed the four tests using a standard GTX 980 card, a single Strix GTX 980 Ti, and finally two Strix 980 Ti's in dual SLI configuration. So first up then is the 3D Mark Firestrike test, and you can see the test running right now. The Firestrike test is a DirectX 11 benchmark for high performance PCs. It's a very demanding test. At the end of the test, it gives you a score, which, give, which you can use to go online to check how your system performs overall when compared to other builds around the world running the same test. Although the number doesn't mean much by itself, bigger does mean better, and it does allow you to compare the performance of two different systems. So let's have a look at the final Firestrike results. The yellow bars represent the dual SLI configuration, the orange bars represent the single GTX 980, and the red bar represents the stock GTX 980. Now what's interesting about this graph is, you can see straight away that the relationship between the orange and yellow is not 2 to 1. In other words, if you put two cards in the computer, it doesn't give you double the performance. The reason for this is because the cards are not always the limiting factor. In the Firestrike test, there are a number of physics-based tests, and the graphics cards can find themselves held up by the processing power of the CPU. Add a better processor with more uh, cores and more hyperthreading, and you will help to unblock the processing power of the graphics cards. You can see that in the final test just before this benchmark, where the frame rates are very low across all three setups. In that particular test, Quite simply, the graphics cards are being slowed down by the rest of the system. One final thing to note about this test is the difference between the red and orange bars. That's the difference between a stock GTX 980 and a Strix GTX 980 Ti. Quite a significant jump in performance. The next benchmark was the built-in benchmark test with Tomb Raider. Now, Tomb Raider is a 2013 game, but it's well known for being able to scale effectively across three different resolutions. You can see the frame rates here, in 1080 we're doing well over 200 frames and 1440 we're doing 150 frames and even at 4K, rock solid above 60 frames. You can also see the temperatures of the GPUs and also, in particular, the percentage utilisation which is very high across all three resolutions. Looking at the benchmark results for Tomb Raider, the most striking thing is the difference between the orange and yellow bar. Quite simply with this test, when you add a second GTX 980 Ti card in SLI, it virtually doubles the frame rate performance without any loss in quality. This is a game that is highly playable with two 980 Ti's across any resolution up to 4K. Next up is the Metro Last Light Redux built-in benchmarking test. Now this benchmarking test is actually quite useful. It's quite thorough, you can change the settings, you can tell it how many times to run the test, and then at the end of it, it will give you a breakdown of all the different results. I ran this test, and again, the details of the benchmarking settings I used are in the description. And what's interesting about this is that at 1080p, the two graphics cards are massively underutilized. You'll see them hovering around 50, 60, 70%. Only at 4K are both cards being properly taxed which means there is a bottleneck, and the bottleneck in this case is not in the graphics card, nor is it in the CPU, so I can't quite work out where the bottleneck is for this particular benchmark. There are scenes where both the 4K and the 1440p test maximise both graphics cards, but for the 1080 it's just simply not the case. The cards are generally running at 50% to two thirds of their full capacity. Putting the results together for the Metro Last Light benchmark, you can see the insane FPS that two GTX 980 Ti's can pull out at 1080p, 266 FPS average. Now nobody's going to play it at that kind of level, so what else can we get from this? Well, if we look at the orange bars, which is a single GTX 980 Ti, 
You can see that the average frame rate at 1440p is 85, which tells us that you could play Metro Last Light Redux at a rock solid minimum 60 FPS with a single card on 1440p. A GTX 980 averages 60, which basically means it's probably fluctuating somewhere between 40 and 80 FPS. So one single GTX 980 could pull this game off at 1440. With two GTX 980s, however, you could then go to 4K and play it at 75 average FPS. For the final benchmarking test, I chose this intro sequence from Witcher 3. Now remember, in all the benchmarks, we are running on ultra settings. Witcher 3 is a very demanding game, and when you put all of the settings on ultra, it will tax even the most battle-hardened gaming rig. Now, The Witcher 3 is a modern 2015 game, and as such, it manages to utilize all of the available processing power. You can see that at all resolutions, it is effectively using both graphics cards, both of which are utilized 85% or more at all times. The processor itself is also utilized at 60%, but is no longer the bottleneck. Now, Witcher 3 is a stunning looking game, but these benchmarking tests really do push the boat out in terms of what modern cards can do, which makes Witcher 3 an ideal candidate to test the ultimate in current gaming. At these ultra settings on Witcher 3, a single GTX 980 is going to barely knock out 60 FPS at 1080p. On 1440 and 4K, it's going to drop down to 40 or even 20, making it fairly unplayable. Now a GTX 980 Ti, on the other hand, can knock out 80 FPS at 1080, making it exceedingly playable at 1080 resolution. 1440, you may see it dip under the 60K, and at 4K, well, you're gonna be mustering somewhere between 20 and 40 FPS. If you want to go 4K in Witcher 3, you're going to have to get two GTX 980s in SLI, or compromise on some of your settings. Even with two GTX 980s, you can see that at 1080, you're gonna get 100 FPS. Now compare that to something like Metro or Last Light, which are 2013 games, and you can see the difference in FPS. This is a 2015 game, and at 1080p with two GTX 980s, we can only get 106 FPS. That is how detailed this game is. The Asus Strix GTX 980 Ti is a monster of a card. It's probably the fastest 980 Ti implementation you can currently buy. And at almost half the price of a GTX Titan, it represents amazing value for money. In its current state, it will smash through any game you can throw at it in 1080p. If you're a gamer in 1440p, it'll certainly take that to 60 FPS in almost all of the games. If you want to go 4K, you are going to need to get two of these cards to get the best out of your game if you want high frame rates. I hope you found this benchmark and review video useful. Don't forget there's a lot of information in the video description. Until next time, happy gaming.